So welcome back, everybody. It's time to meet our community. The Hispanic business community here in Orange County. Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center. With a special episode today with some special friends and our special host, Ruben Franco. Hey, Ruben. Who'd you hey, bring? Paul. How are you? Good. Uh, uh, one of your old friends? Here. Yeah, full disclosure, I have a former fraternity brother of mine, uh, Kevin Abbott, who's here. Uh, Kevin and I go way back, more, yeah. more than three decades back, I hate to say, <laughs> but we do. We went to UCLA together, and uh, we're in the same fraternity together, and uh, known each other for years. Know his uh, wife, Julie. Yeah, you and dated my, my wife, yeah. I dated your wife, too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm still here. That's how good a guy you are. That's how good a guy you are. Yeah, yeah. good a guy you are here <laughs> after that happened. So. But... Uh, Thank you for being here. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. You know, this is our podcast that we bring out to our community. And, uh, uh, you know, Kevin is a very famous showrunner, one of the top showrunners in uh, all of TV. And uh, we're, we're All right, I'll take it. Well, yeah, <laughs> we're very fortunate to have him. And, we, you know, we have a lot of students we work with throughout, you know, all the universities here. And so they'll be uh, glad to hear from you what you have to say about uh, the industry and the business and maybe some a little advice, too, as well. So we, sure. we look forward to the conversation, but what we'd like to start the podcast off with usually is just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and uh, yeah, let, right. let everybody know who you are. Yeah, uh, my name is Kevin Abbott, uh, and I've been doing, you know, TV writing for, gosh, 34 years now, 33, 34 years. I started right out of college, basically six months out of college. Uh, met my wife, Julie, at UCLA. We're both Bruins. Uh, we've been married for 35 years. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, three kids. Uh, two, of the, two of them are in the business. My girls. Uh, Katie's a, a manager at a, a, a talent agency slash production company called Circle of Confusion that's uh, famous for Walking Dead. And my daughter, Jessie, is a development exec over at um, Capital Entertainment, which is a production company that does uh, tons of TV shows. You know, they just their big one just now was uh, Oprah Winfrey's uh, Women of the Movement. No grandkids yet. I'd like to have grandkids. I'm yeah. pushing, but you know, who, I've, I've who, turned into that guy. You know, if I who can, just got married was it Jesse? Jesse, Jesse just, just got married. married. Yeah, she got married Couple just before COVID hit, okay. uh, October of uh, 19, uh, 2019. Okay, so just before it hit, we got in under the wire. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, I've been running TV shows now. Probably, uh, gosh, so I guess 95. Uh, I've been running various TV shows. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride. It's not something uh, we got to get them to list a couple of them here. We got to get them to yeah. rattle right. off some of the well, shows. Tell sure. us a little, recently, you worked uh, obviously you were the showrunner for Last Man Standing with Tim Allen. And yep, that Nancy was Nancy Travis and uh, Hector Elizondo. Yeah, and just, fantastic. Uh, my one of my favorite shows of all time because I you know I have to ask you this question just because politically Tim was a conservative. Yes, right? yes, and, uh, and I think he is personally, but he I mean, is personally, but, yeah. But I mean, in the show, and he was. You know, he didn't hold. He didn't pull any punches on it. Yeah, and you know, Mike. My, my I got to tell you, one of the interesting things for me about doing that show was that angle on it, because uh, you know, I, I'm uh, left of center. You know, when Julie and I uh, graduated, actually, one of us was a Republican, one of us was a Democrat. We couldn't remember which one was which, <laughs> <laughs> because it used to be much closer. It yeah, used to be much yeah. closer to the parties. Yeah. Uh, and and now they've, uh, as everybody knows, they've gotten a little further apart. So going in, you know, it was, it was, uh, struggle is the wrong word. It was a challenge to make certain that I always made Tim look, uh, to, to not make him look bad, basically. To not, not let any bias I might have about any particular subject uh, color that character's mm -hmm. viewpoints, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I, you know, I, I like to think I did a good job on it. Uh, you know, I, I would read further right wing uh, you know websites and yeah. I'd watch Fox News and whatnot just to kind of get a feel for what uh, what was being talked about and how they how uh, sure. certain people felt you know and and what I'd tell my writers all the time is look you know certain of the writers had a real problem with the character uh, and I'd say you know you got to love the characters to write them you got to love them you know find yeah. something you love in the character and and build around that right. because if you don't like the character that's going to come out it's going to come out in your writing right. uh, so you got to actually like the character 
uh, and hopefully you love him. And I, you know, I loved that character. And that, that character was a, you know, Tim and Tim. I love Tim too. Uh, they're good-hearted people. You know, yeah. that that character was always coming from a point of view of of wanting what's best for his family and for the community. Uh, yeah, and and I didn't find it difficult to write that character at all. You know, a lot of it was just kind of. We viewed it as Tim was a traditionalist, is how we kind of called it, which is, you know, he's not against change. He's not against doing things differently, but he just wants to pump the brakes a little bit because yeah. of the law of unintended consequences. That's you never right. know what's going to happen, right? right? And we'd get to do the law of unintended consequences of what happened with these things. So, yeah, it was, it was, I really enjoyed that time. I really enjoyed that time with Tim. You know, he was, he, he is one of those guys that has whatever that it thing is, you know. Mm -hmm. I used to go in with Tim because, you know, if he was just kind of flat or a little down in show night or trying to remember his lines, you know, I'd tell him, well, say, say it however you'd want to say it, unless it was a word-specific joke, which I tried to keep away from Tim because uh, he didn't memorize his lines too well. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but I'd say, you know, say how, how, say how it's going to come out of your mouth because I want it to feel natural. I don't want you remembering your lines, and I want you coming out right. because I said, you know, I need the twinkle, Tim. I said, there's... I said, you're a really good actor, right? I said, but there's 10,000 really good actors in Hollywood. I need the star because there's very few of those. And you're a star when you twinkle, when you turn it on, when, you, when you're in the moment, when you're feeling mm -hmm. it and having fun with it. That's what I need. Uh, and, you know, he would bring it, man. And he, he did have the twinkle. He absolutely had the twinkle. Same yeah. with, uh, you know, I was on Roseanne for a couple of years. And Roseanne, you know, for as difficult as she could be, uh, had the twinkle. She had that thing, you know, whatever it is that just makes you look at these people. I had a, my show run on the show, Rob Ewan, who, who was great. He used to say that what, what stars have, the quality that they have, is they can make you, it's like a baby, a newborn. They can make you feel whatever emotion they're feeling. If they're overjoyed and happy, much like a, then you're happy. It just makes you feel happy. If they're crying, you are going to cry. If they're angry, it's going to make you angry. They have that ability Wow. To kind of make you feel that way, you know, uh, and I think that's true. Can, can I tell a quick Roseanne sure, story? Sure, absolutely. So we were. Uh, it was the second season. Roseanne had the. You know, she'd come in at the beginning of the season and say, you know, I want to do a show about racism. Or, you know, I want to do a show about whatever. You know, we'd have to come up with something. And usually it was always about more challenging subjects. But this one, she comes in. And she says, I want to do a show about abortion. And we're like, I want my character to have an abortion. Like, uh. yeah. And we would spent the previous season trying to get that character pregnant. So we sit down and we try to break a story. How do we? How can we justify this character who's just spent a year trying to get pregnant having an abortion? Right. Uh, and we failed. We absolutely failed. So we had to go out to her house in uh, Brentwood. We're supposed to picture the stories, Rob, uh, me, and two of the other writers. And we get out there. We're basically all going, okay, <laughs> just before we go in, so look, we're probably going to get fired today because we have to tell her we can't do this. But we all agree we can't do this, right? We yeah. can't have this character have an abortion. We're like, yeah, yeah, we all agree. We all agree. So we go in the house. She lets us in. Just as she lets us in, hey, come on in. We got some muffins and stuff in here. Just, uh, just as she comes in, her, her um, daughter that she gave up for adoption, Brandy, uh, and had just rediscovered that summer, and it's now she's staying with him. She comes in the back door, and she's clearly been out all night. And she and Roseanne start screaming at each other. Wow, well, you Ben, you bleep and bleep, and ah, shut up, you and just scream and scream and scream. And Brandy storms off, and then we're like, oh man, we're gonna tell Roseanne we can't do this right now. And she's like, all right, come on in. We go sit down. Rob hems and haws for like five minutes, and finally says, we just can't figure out how to do this. And she goes. Oh, didn't I tell you? I don't want to do the abortion anymore. They shot that abortion doctor in Iowa. I don't want that to happen to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, really? She goes, yeah, have Darlene have an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> so, Holy cow. Yeah. But you know what? She had that star thing. We walked out of there. The point of that was we walked out, and we, we were just swapping stories at that point with Roseanne, and we walked out so happy. And so, like, oh, that was great. And, and we got outside and was like, oh, I feel dirty. We, we were so convinced she was going to be awful. And now, you know, now we are, she's got us. She got us, got us back and we're, we're back in her, you know. Oh, I love this woman. You know, she just had that power. And yeah. Tim had the power, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He always says it's so funny because, you know, he's telling me, you know, two of his most iconic roles are Santa Claus and, and Buzz Lightyear. Mm -hmm. You know, he always gets requests. Uh, can you can you send a message, you know, voicemail, Buzz Lightyear or something like that? And he'll do it. I mean, he, he, again, really good guy. 
but he doesn't particularly like children. <laughs> you know, he doesn't. Okay. You know, he doesn't. You know, he's just he doesn't he, he doesn't like the social interaction. He doesn't like other people's kids that much. And he, of course, he plays two characters that he is going to get approached by kids all yeah, the time, absolutely. all the time. Yeah. So, and you know, to his credit, he will. He never takes it out on them. He goes, ah, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I was just watching the Santa Claus the other because it's been on every yeah. night for the last uh, five weeks. Exactly or right. And he kneels down to this little girl who doesn't, who thinks he's Santa Claus, but nobody else, because he's not. He doesn't look like Santa Claus. Right. But, and it's a very warm. It's one of the best moments in the in the movie. Yeah. And you go, oh wow, that's you know. Yeah. But it's interesting that you say that in real life. He's not really. Well, you know, again, you know, with other people's kids, you know, yeah. it, it's funny. He really, with the actresses on the show who played his daughters, he he really took kind of like a. He felt very much the father figure to them. Sure. And when we'd do a scene where you know he'd have some emotional scene with say uh, you know Caitlin Deaver, uh, phenomenal. Uh, Great young actors. Yeah. yeah, you know yeah. they would they would move me to tears, man. They were they they would really connect, you know, and because yeah. and, he felt that way about him, and he could convey that, you know, he really, he, you know, he was he was kind of devastated when the show ended. I mean, we were on for ten seasons. That's yeah. that's forever. I don't know if shows are going to do that anymore in the streaming world, but but uh, you know, he's like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I mean, I love coming in here and being here, and and uh, yeah, I mean, it's like. Well, sorry, Tim. <laughs> I'll work with you again if you got something going. But uh, yeah. you know, he, he just forms those connections with people. He, there was a really good guy there. I mean, I got to yeah. tell you. I mean, well, it de definitely comes across, you know, on screen that he's just yeah, he's one of the funniest men I've ever seen yeah. on TV and movies. And there's a lot of people out there that come across great as great people who really aren't. aren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul and I were talking about that earlier, but yeah, yeah. I mean, and and that's. It's. I'd almost say more. The I always tell people don't don't meet the people you really love, uh, you, that yeah. you admire, because they're not gonna they're gonna let you down most of the time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I think you're right. Well, you're talking about you know comedies and you know what is the there's not that many three camera shows anymore, right? No, it's it's uh, there's there's not a lot of them. I, mean, I actually did a show called Cool Kids with uh, Charlie Day. Um, that's that that I went on and did it because basically I supervised it and uh, th th there are not only that, not that many shows out there but there's not that many people that know how to do them anymore. Okay. Basically, the Fox executives are telling me, well, you know, you're you're teaching us how to do this because none of us have done a four camera show, and I'm like, really? You know, I mean, it just uh, that the framework that used to be there where you know when I started uh, 34 years ago, you know, you worked your way up from staff writer. Uh, when I started, there were only three networks. Uh, yep. Fox came along the next year. Uh, and, you know, you, you, you learned your craft. You learned the ability to do this. And, and just, also, you know, just the things of like uh, when we were shooting the, the pilot to Cool Kids, I said, you know, we're not going to I said we're not going to shoot the whole show in front of the audience. So we've got sets that are on that are out of the audience's view. And I'm going to pre-shoot those and just run them back. And they're like, well, no, no, we want to see the whole thing. It's like, no, you don't understand. This is not good for the audience. It will kill the energy in the audience. Yeah. There's a reason to have an audience, and that's to kind of bring that play-like energy, that feeling of you're with the crowd at the game. Uh, and you don't want to waste that. You know, you want to keep this entertaining for them. So we're going we're gonna to show it to them and move on. And, and I had to fight them on it, but they eventually uh, agreed. And you know what? They're, they're like, yeah, you were right. You're absolutely right. Keep, make sure you're going to shoot those scenes in front of the audience that, are, that, that they can enjoy. Right. You know, with Tim... Uh, We'd always pr try to pre-shoot uh, some episode, some scenes, so that we could get through the night quicker, and then once again c keep it entertaining for the audience. But I always had to make sure that you know I had I tried to get the scenes that Tim was in that are in front of the audience, so primarily the kitchen scene and the mm -hmm. living room scene, right? Right, and not so much the, the not so much um, uh, the workplace, although I could use his office more, but but tried to keep those in front of the audience because I know those are more they, look they came to see Tim Allen. Uh, and those are going to be more interesting to them. They may love the whole show and the cast and everything, but you know, Tim is the reason that we were there, and him was the mm -hmm. reason we were on the air. You know, uh, so I wanted to give them the audience that th that reward. You know, that yeah. they came to see. Yeah, I want you to walk out of here going, "Oh my God, that was so great! That was we had to see Tim Allen, and he talked to us, and uh, you know, because Tim would do a little bit of warm up. He always told his potato joke, you know, uh, and, and <laughs> would try to. He loved interacting with the audience too. You yeah. know, so it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but will it come back? I think it might come back. Just, just to be 
honest. I mean, my my career has seen kind of the pendulum swing on mm-hmm. uh, on on uh, four camera. Uh, it was big when I started uh, and dominant, and then and then single camera came in, and that pretty much dominated for ten years or so. Uh, and and then reality shows came in and kind of took up that space. Uh, ultimately, I think there is something different and better that that four camera does as opposed to single camera. It's 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 more of a writer's medium, I think, because mm-hmm. we are more like a play. We don't get to go everywhere. We don't get to show you every space. So we, you know, we have to describe what is happening outside yeah. of what you see very often, you know, and we get to be more, you know, the, the, the actors, the characters have to speak more deeply in some ways, you know, with the good ones, obviously, um, the good, the good shows. Uh, and I think that that makes it, I think that's, it's more interesting for a writer, quite honestly. You know, uh, uh, I did My Name is Earl for a year and great show and everything, but it really wasn't as rewarding. I never felt, felt closer to factory work than when I was doing that show because, <laughs> you, you, you know, you didn't have show night, which I love. Show right. night is, I always say, you know, it's the cookie. The, our reward at the end of the, of the week for working hard is that you get to come in here and this audience gets to, yeah. to give you – you know, show you the love. Look, comedy writers. You know, I say they're all they're all messed up human beings. You know, they they are all in a lot of pain, and the only way they know how to deal with it is to spread it around. Sure, you know, yeah. so they're all kind of damaged people, and they're look. I mean, they're, this is the way they get love: is people laughing at, at at what they've done and and feeling the emotion that you wanted to feel when when you're when you're trying to hit it. Uh, I just love that. I mean, uh, my wife said she's never seen me happier than when I'm standing at the monitor and the show's going well and just, you know, I, I apparently I mouth all the lines as the actors are doing them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's 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 a rush that, that yeah. I just don't get anywhere else, you know? Yeah, well, I, you you were nice enough to invite us to one of uh, yeah, the yeah, tapes. I remember. It's like it was the first episode of, I forget what, season nine or... It was season eight, nine, eight, I think, yeah. Eight, nine. Yeah, but... Uh, and uh, it was great. It was an awesome episode. And uh, I told Julia, I sent Julia a text afterwards, and I said, you know. What? You're texting my wife? Well. <laughs> there you go ah, again. Ah, man. There you go. <laughs> uh, no, but I just, maybe I messaged her. I just said, you know, Kevin was fantastic. I mean, he just, there was a certain, you know, they were talking about, like, James Burroughs being a concerto, you know, conductor, right? Mm-hmm. And I just noticed that with you in that episode, of the, how you related to Tim Allen and Nancy Travis and like in between takes and just, yeah. and just the camaraderie between and then how you would get another take out of it. It was even better than the first. And there was just a certain joy in your face that I noticed. And I just thought you had a command. You weren't even the director of the nah. episode. <laughs> well, the thing. Writers in, especially in four camera, uh, there's, we're much more in control of right. the, of the medium. You know, my directors right. were all great and everything, but yeah, I felt, you know, I had the, because we didn't have a house director. We had, uh, you know, directors that came yeah, in. And they'd do in, like yeah. five, uh, you know, or, right. or uh, Victor Gonzalez did a, a bunch for us. And Victor was great. He's done a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah, but, but because because Tim, as great a guy as I think he is, is also, he's got his idiosyncrasies. Mm. Uh, and he, he has a tendency to want to say no to whatever it is you're bringing in. The first year that I ran the show, uh, I think I was batting 0% on the <laughs> changes that I tried to give him. Because he didn't trust me yet, you yeah. know. Uh, by the end, he, he totally trusted me, and I. But I knew how to relate to him, you know, to how to say to because he believed that I, you know, I told him once. I said, you know what, Tim. Even if I didn't like you, and I do, you know, I know you don't trust writers, but even if I didn't like you, it's in my best interest to make you look as good as possible. You know, I need right. you to look as good as possible. Sure. So even if I didn't like you, I would be trying my. Be- when I'm coming in here, I'm trying to make you look as good as possible. Uh, and, you know, and he finally understood that, but, he, but he also understood that if, when I'm coming in, I'm not saying you have to do this. I, I'm coming in and saying, Hey, how about this line? What do you think about this? Can you have fun with that? Uh, and, and he'll respond, you know, and he'll want to add because he's a great, you know, very creative, funny guy. Uh, and it was when we could build that trust between us right. that, uh, that, that kind of took off. So it was, it's. I always felt like if he did great and I love the take, I'm going to walk in and say, that was a great take, man. It made me, that was fantastic. You know, he needs to hear that. Uh, and if it didn't work, then it's up to me to walk in and go, hey, not your best, man. You know, I need the twinkle. I need the star twinkle. And you could, and you could tell it to somebody like that. Absolutely. Even at that level. Not, like at, that. not, at, not at first, but okay. when we got to a level of trust that, yes, like I'm, because he knows I'm telling him, I, that's not a take I can use. That's, that's yeah. flat. I know you can do better than this. 
you know, with Nancy, Nancy's just a consummate pro. Nancy, I, I, I enjoyed so much. Uh, the problem was I have a, I have a very loud laugh uh, and I'm off, st- you know, I'm off, I'm off stage, right? right. Uh, if you listen to any shows I've worked on, you can usually hear that. Ah! Yeah. But Nancy would hear me laughing at her stuff, which would make her laugh. So she would break. Mm. So it was always this thing of, you know, she tried mm. to hold on at a spot where I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but, you know, you could give them stuff as, as well as almost all of the, the kid actors. They were they were just great. But you had to kind of approach them each in their own way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, show running is it. I would say I actually would prefer to be the number two on a show. That's actually my preferred job. Really? Yeah, because, you know, the pay is not that much better as a show. <laughs> I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But it's not that much better. And really, when you're the number two to a, a writer that you respect, who respects you, you get to do all that stuff that I got into the business to do anyway, to do the writing, to, mm-hmm. to come up with the, right. sh- the stories and, sure. and, the, and the jokes. When you become showrunner, you now have to do all this other stuff. It has nothing to do with writing. Yeah. That is so irritating and awful, and I hate it. You know, part of it, you know, part of it's just the production side of things and dealing with all the budgets and uh, and the physical act of here's a scene I wrote that takes place in a in a laundromat. You know, how many washing machines do you want there? Do you want the washer dryers there? Yeah. You know, what what color scheme do you want on the actors in the on wardrobe? It's like, you know, you can't really see me, but I don't know wardrobe. I'm not gonna, right. you know. Uh, so I, that stuff all just drives me nuts. Uh, and and part of it that used to drive me nuts that I came to really enjoy was was managing the, the cast, was figuring out, you know, how to get each actor to feel safe. Because that's a lot of it, I think. A lot of it is just yeah. making them feel safe. Trust you know, you, that yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to send you out there with something that doesn't work. Yeah. And, if, and if in front of the audience, it, you know, for whatever reason it didn't work, I'm going to figure out why it didn't work and we're going to, we're going to change it, you know, and we're going to make certain that you look good, you know. Uh, so, yeah, managing the cast is, is it's a big, you know, it can, my wife would always show, she came to almost every show and she'd say, is it a good show? And I'd say, well, it is on paper, <laughs> you know, and now it's out of my, now the actors have to do it. How, right. it, how it actually ends up, right. that'll be up to the actors, you know. Is there ever, like, do you ever go into like a Monday when you do the table read or whenever the day is and just go, there is nothing on paper here that we could use. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, just like zero almost. You yeah. Start from we call ground. it a page one, and we've done really? that. We had one, very little on, on Last Man Standing. We had one on Reba uh, that we did, that we had a, an episode where Reba, uh, uh, one of her old friends had uh, hurled flames that Brock had stolen her from, uh, had passed away. Mm. And we, we read it at table. And it was, you know, no pun intended, but it was death. It was awful. It was just yeah. flat, and it's like, this does not work. And it's a story problem. It ain't just fixing some words. Yeah. Uh, so we went back. We said, okay, you know, we have to do notes after. We have the table reading, and then the network and studio will give us their notes and thoughts, and I'll tell them what I'm planning on doing. And then you go back and rewrite. Well, this one I said, just don't worry about notes. This is all going to change. It's not going to be a word that's the same. And uh, went back and had to re-break the story completely, you know, uh, which we did, and we wrote it, and... Uh, Next day, it didn't really work either, and, and but we had it changed enough that we knew what where the roadmap was. We right. could see it, and it wound up being a really good show. We had one on uh, on Last Man with the, the morning of the table read. We'd read on Wednesday mornings, and then we they'd rehearse Thursday, Friday, and they'd they'd do run throughs for the me and the writers uh, where they would perform it for us so that we could see if it worked or not. And then Monday was uh, camera blocking and pre shoot, and then uh, Tuesday would be show and show night. Um, Wednesday morning we go to table. And I get a call as I'm walking in the door that Tim's in the hospital. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they don't know what's wrong with him. So they don't know what's going to happen. Now, on a show called Last Man Standing, when the last man ain't standing, (laughs) it becomes a little difficult, right? And and, uh, we did the table read, and he'll say, well, let's hear what we can hear. hear." And, uh, you know, uh, we got done with it, and... and, uh, I talked to, we were on Fox at the time. And, uh, I said, you know, I'm insurance would cover if we had to shut down for a week. Um, but you know, it's expensive. They prefer yeah. not to do that. Right. So I said, let me get, give me, give me an hour. Let me see if I can just rework this. Let's figure if we can figure out a path forward on it. Uh, which we did. We wound up finding out a path forward and we did, we, uh, uh, we did, uh, you know, we just rewrote it all that night and it takes obviously there a bit longer. Um, but we just switched roles and we had Tim do uh, something that we'd done on Roseanne, which was uh, we had Tim drop in. We had something we had like he'd, he'd be at the beginning of a scene. He was, 
you know, mm -hmm. trying to get there. And we, we said, we'll shoot this part, these parts, uh, when he gets back. Uh, and it wound up being, you know, the, the network loved it. They thought it was really good. What was the episode? The episode was Ed, try, Ed, um, is getting married to, uh, Nancy's mom, to, uh, oh, Vanessa's yeah, mom. Yeah, okay. And Tim is stuck up in, uh, he gets snowed in and he has to try to get back to the, to the, and it, Ed winds up in the hospital. Yeah. So Ed's in the hospital. Ed's in the hospital. Right. right. And yeah. they get, they have the wedding ceremony in right. the hospital. Uh, yeah, but you know, Tim, we had to take Tim completely out of that. Uh, wow! And we had one on Roseanne. My first year there, we were uh, we were there, and uh, it was the sixth episode in, sixth or seventh episode, and uh, the Emmys were on the night before, and she won that year for best actress in a comedy, okay. first time she'd wow. ever won. Uh, and I remember you know, looking at my wife and saying, "Oh, okay, it's going to be a good week." Because uh, you may not know this, but but Roseanne could be tough on writers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I'm saying, oh, it's going to be a good week. She's going to be in a good mood. And we go in, and uh, we're sitting at table. We used to do table uh, table reads in the on the set there. Uh, and Roseanne's not there, and she's not there. And finally, Tom Arnold comes in. And this is when they were married. And Tom goes, oh, just uh, let's just go ahead. You know, uh, we'll do it without Rosie. She's not here right now. And we're like, okay, you know, kind of pointless because you yeah. know to not hear what she's going to yeah. do, right? Midway through the, the table read, uh, we see Roseanne poke her head out from behind the set. Go, Tom, Tom. <laughs> Tom gets up and goes, right, just keep going, just keep going. I'm like, all right. And, you know, and the cast is reading and her, her stand-in's reading her part. And they're screaming at each other back there. Some huge, huge fight. And uh, we hear her, you know, storm off. And he comes back and goes, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. So we go back. We go back to the writer's room. We're like, okay, well, what are we going to do? You know, how are we going to rewrite this? And, and Rob gets a call uh, and he comes back in. And he says, everybody uh, but Kevin and uh, Miriam and Eric, uh, go home and I'll call you uh, and let you know what's going on uh, for the yeah. week. And we're like, well, what's, what's going on? And he's like, well, we, this can't get out uh, there uh, because Carsey Werner's in negotiations with ABC for a three year pickup. So they don't want uh, people to know that, you know, Roseanne's had a, a breakdown. Uh, and we're, she's going to be hospitalized for a little while. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. And we're like, what? Go, yeah, they don't, we did, they don't know how long this is going to be. But nobody can know, so you need to write a new episode without her. <laughs> Just like that. Just yeah. like that. Yeah, hey, sure. we, we didn't have any in the bank that didn't yeah. have Roseanne in them, you know? Uh, so, yeah, we had to scramble. Uh, we, we wound up, it wound up being a very good episode. It's a, uh, Vicki Lawrence was in it, and, and it was Dan... Vicki Lawrence was one of Dan's old flames, and she oh, okay. shows up, and then uh, Roseanne comes back. He doesn't he doesn't cheat or anything like that because uh, Dan loved Roseanne, uh, but he winds up having uh, very creative sex with Roseanne when she comes home that evening, and she's all thrilled about it. And then Jackie reveals that no, it was you know he was thinking about her. You cheated in your mind, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what we did is we did the same thing. We shot right. scenes with her to, you know, she'd walk out of a scene or something like that. Right. Uh, but, you know, those those days, you, you hate to see them, but you never know when they're coming. You know, you never really know. No. It's amazing how often you can get a scripted table that everybody's read and gone, oh, yeah, this is really good. It's really tight. And then it reads and you go, that didn't work. And you go, yeah, there's a huge fundamental flaw here that we, you know, it's going to take a lot of writing to fix. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. There's a... You and I were growing up. You said there were three stations, and it became Fox as well. And then now there, and there's I forget how many scripted shows there were back then. There's like over 500 scripted shows. Yeah. Most of them, you know, the kind of limited series and yep. streaming, and it's changed quite a bit yeah. since you've you've been in it. What, this is entirely different. Yeah. yeah. What are you? Uh, you know you did Last Man Standing. What are you working on? Now, what are you thinking about doing now? Or I mean, I don't even, I don't even know. I didn't ask you on, pur <laughs> on purpose ahead of this podcast, just just so we could get it live. But uh. well, I'm actually working right now. I, I did the the final season of Last Man was during uh, COVID, and that that was just a really tough a tough year, um, in the sense that it, you know we didn't have show nights because we couldn't have audiences. Right, right. So it really was just a a drudge, you know. And it was just me and my number two, Matt Barry. We we're the only ones in the offices doing the writing and. Uh, you know, all of the protocols and, and the testing and whatnot, it just was, it kind of burned me out that year. Yeah. So I, uh, I took a year off just to, to recharge. Uh, and, and right now I'm working on a project that, that I'm probably going to take out, uh, beginning of next year with, uh, with Reba again, Reba wants to do another show. Oh, great. Yeah. So we've been working on a show together and, uh, but I like it a lot, you know, and if that doesn't go, then probably beginning of 
next season, although there really aren't seasons anymore. Uh, no, there's not. You know, I, I might go try to run. I mean, like I said, I'm kind of getting at the stage of my career where show running takes, it takes your entire focus. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it really does command your life in so many ways. And as a writer, when I'm writing, you know, you're, as the showrunner, you basically write every episode in a sense and that you, it all has to work for you. You rewrite them all. I don't stop thinking about them. You know, my wife will complain and she would go like, she'll be telling me something and then and it's, you know, finish. And I'm like, okay, is this funny? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> were you listening? Yeah, I heard it all. I just need, this is in my head and I need to get yeah. it out. Uh, it just takes over everything. And, and I'm less willing to do that uh, yeah. than I used to be. I mean, I, uh, if I could find consulting gigs on it and just help people out uh, because, you know, there aren't that many people who know how to do four camera anymore. That would be preferable to me. Uh, but I, I always wind up helping out and then I wind up running the show at some point, you know, and it's yeah. just, it just becomes, uh, uh, so anyway, I mean, if I can get the Reba show going, that's when I would be willing to go ahead and, and run and do the, show and do the yeah, energy yeah. of it. Yeah. Got it. But I'm constantly, I mean, I like the streaming, uh, idea because I'm, the idea of doing eight or ten episodes as opposed to 22 uh is great i mean yeah. we usually have we you know pre-production is about six weeks before production starts and uh i like to have eight stories broken in some form so that'll mean like you know I'll have three scripts uh a couple of outlines and then the notion of the the eighth one so right. uh so i it would be no problem doing that it'd be, be done pr practically in pre-season you <laughs> yeah. know but 22 Usually, you know, the, if you if you ever watch seasons of shows that were 22, usually the ones in the middle are a little weaker, and and the reason that is is because the writers getting tired. What happens is they all the they have all this great stuff from pre production when they mm -hmm. had plenty of time right. and they were well rested, coming off hiatus, uh, and that all goes in like the first five six shows, right? Yeah. And then they're kind of going now. These are the the ideas that didn't that weren't good enough to be the first ones, right? The next the next batch is those yeah. ones, and they're going through those. And then by the time you get to 13, you're exhausted. It's, you know, you, you still can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you just want to, you know, you, that's why those shows kind of suck. Once you get to the back nine, once you get to like 15 or 16, it's like, oh, I can see the end again. Yeah. You kind of get some more energy. Uh, but I, I, that's why I'd prefer to do eight or 10. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Do you have any advice for, we have a lot of, you know, students here in Orange County, that, mm -hmm. uh, and all over Southern California, obviously, but uh, yeah. we're here on the campus of UCI, but there's also Chapman here who has a great film school and Fullerton, and right. any advice you have to uh, young people breaking in, like the way, I mean, it, I don't know if it's, you consider it's changed a, a bit since you broke in uh, yeah. three yeah. decades ago, and anything that they should be focused on? And Well, I'll tell you, I mean, it, 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 it somewhat depends on what you want to do or be, you know, I mean, if, I'll, I'll give you the, from the writer's perspective, if you want to be a writer, um, the first thing you should do before doing anything else is write. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, you need to keep that, get that skill going and get that, that muscle working, you know? Uh, and I think it is a muscle, you know, it is something you've got to constantly yeah. do to keep sharp. Um, so right. And then you're going to have to have a spec script. You're going to have to have yeah. something to show people. Um, and it's, and it, shouldn't be an original it shouldn't be an original just because if you're trying to get on a series if you want employment you know if you want to be a movie writer it could be an original if you want to be a tv writer you need to demonstrate that you can write in other people's voices mm. you know if you ever hear a woody allen film or you you know an aaron sorkin yep. that's just all those characters are them you know there's oh, just yeah. them speaking you Absolutely. know it's their rhythms and whatnot well that's not going to work you can't be your voice because it's not going to be your show that you're going on to work on originally so you have to demonstrate that you can take other characters and write them faithfully uh and and believably uh, and then once you get that and make sure and make sure that that thing's as good as it can possibly get before you the big hurdle is going to be how can i get somebody to read this sure that knows what's going on yeah uh, traditionally, I think that the path that's been taken by most of the people that I know uh, that have gotten into the business in the last 10 years or so is is going to work on a production, trying to get a PA job, mm. trying to get an assistant job, sure. uh, trying to do anything that can put you in contact with people that you can ask as a favor. Can you give me can you give this a read? Uh, because I can tell you, you know, when when staffing season would come around, you know, my office would be lined with scripts, you know, three feet high to read. Uh I used to tell agents, all the agents in town, call you and say, "What do you need?" And and, and I'd say, "I need this. I only need this and this." Uh, you know, send me the one you think is best. One the one client. I'm not gonna tell anybody who you did. You know, right? But I'm, if you send me eight eight scripts, saying, "Oh, well, can you just read all these?" I'm not gonna read it. Yours goes to the bottom of the pile. Yeah. Because I don't have the time. I can't. I literally can't get through all of these things. 
I'd have assistants helping me out reading it and saying if it, you know, the ones that clearly aren't going to work. Right. But uh, you kind of need to have somebody you trust that has an ability to uh, to to differentiate good and bad that can read it for you. And the only way to do that is to try to find a job that's probably non-writing that puts you in contact with them. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. The other thing you can do is there's a lot of writers programs out there. Disney has them, Warner yeah. Brothers, uh, for uh, uh, Writers Guild has them. Uh, those also, I think, are, can be can be doors that can be opened. I mean, yeah. uh, I've hired people out of those uh, programs uh, because they're also subsidized, so the studio uh, is more willing to hire them. You know, you can go. Well, they're not going to cost. They're not going to cost the studio. They, you know, Disney program is going to pay for the first year. Uh, yeah. You can get shots out of that too. You'd have to submit something to them. I don't know how the 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 process works, how they do the choosing, but but those are the two ways I know that that. Uh, uh, the most people that have had success getting into the business doing it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great advice. Yeah. Don't just walk up into anybody or just send somebody <laughs> your thing. It's not going to work. They're just going to toss it out. It's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work. You know, I've, I've had people put scripts in my mailbox and, uh, and I can't read them, you know, legally right. I can't, I, I put myself at risk and you know, they're the upside of the, the chances of that script being so brilliant that I have to have this person. It just, you know, not I'm not going to take that chance. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Well, Kevin, we appreciate you being here. I mean, this went by really fast, <laughs> unfortunately. Man, I can talk a lot, can't I? <laughs> you're, yeah, you're, for a writer, I can talk a, writer, a lot. You can talk a lot. That's right. You're, writers are usually... Yeah, you can go sit me in my office alone and let me brood for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it was great catching up with you two personally since you know, I've known each other for uh, a long time. Long and time. Appreciate you being on and... Uh, Admired the success you've had. I mean, because I, I remember you when you were in school. So. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw Nobody, it coming. We didn't see that. Wow. What the hell? But it means anybody can make it. That's true. That is true. But I'm, I'm inspiration for millions. You, you are inspiration for millions. No, but you've done, a, you've done a great job, and I have seen your work, and you, you definitely are, from what I've seen, I'm, my limited knowledge, you're one of the top showrunners I've seen out there. So Thank you, Ruben. I appreciate pre- it, man. appreciate you, you doing that, and look forward to your next uh, – adventure here thank you much buddy did you make me laugh thanks bud appreciate it (laughs) thank you thanks for being on my pleasure thank you everybody for being on our community show we appreciate it well there you have it that doesn't give you pause to come back and hear more I don't know what will as we meet our community each and every week here in Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center, powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> <laughs>